Today's video is going to be about the most asked questions uh, question I, I get, and that is how to choose a good grit progression. In general, I like to um, divide stones into the coarse, medium, and fine types. Uh, coarse being uh, up to about 800 grit, medium from 800 to around 3000 grit, and find anything above that. That will give you a general idea of where to start. But again, grit ratings in stones are a theme that have a lot of nuance to it. Uh, because a thousand grit in one manufacturer isn't necessarily the same as a thousand grit in another, in another manufacturer. And the reason for that being is that uh, grit ratings, the number, is something we have tried to create to make something complicated, simple. Um, <laughs> Uh, because grit rating is trying to give us an indication of the size of the particle that does the abrasion in the steel. And while if, if you were able to have a completely homogeneous, homogeneous uh, mix of abrasive particle in the stone, uh, that would be quite simple. Uh, that isn't necessarily so. So while one manufacturer may have some small abrasive particles mixed in with some large one and would have a medium grit size uh, stated as the grit rating on the stone, another manufacturer would have, say, a more homogeneous mix and give you another finish. So I could go on about this for ages, but I decided I wanted to show you what I'm talking about. And to do this, I have chosen three stones. Uh, the Shapton Pro, 1000 grit. Uh, I have the Naniwa Chosera in 1000 grit. And I have a Finnish slate which is sold as 1000 grit stone, being a natural stone that is. So um, I have also chosen a rather soft steel for this, mainly for speed and to try to highlight the uh, scratches as much as possible and I'll be using my microscope to try to get some good uh, images of the edge. So um, I'm going to start with the Shapton Pro and the reason as to why I'm starting with the Shapton Pro is um, that Shapton is known for having uh, the kind of workhorse stones. The stones that does the job and does it quickly. And the reason why that is that the abrasive particles in the Shapton Pro, uh, someone might correct me on this one, but uh, they are uh, rather large. They have some large particles in the mix and the bonding agent doesn't polish the edge as well. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's a bad stone, it, it just means that it's a fast stone. And when you're going on to other grits, say you want something finer than a thousand grit after this, uh, this would be a very good stepping stone for that. It's also a very good stone for uh, general maintenance, uh, for people who don't necessarily want to go anything coarser. So, uh, you will see what, when I'm starting to work on this, it's removing quite a bit of a metal. And it also grips the knife pretty well. Uh, I don't know if it comes through on the camera, but the whole table is shaking. Try to do something about that. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Do the other side as well.
like so. And you can see that quite a, um, the amount of metal has been removed from the knife. Let's see if I can get it a little bit closer to the camera. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to uh, be wiping off this uh, knife now, and I'm going to take it over to the um, microscope, and let's have a closer look. So that's the uh, shaft and frost on out of the way. We are now going on to the next one, which will be the Naniwa Chosera. And um, while I get the image up on the screen, uh, you can see this is going to serve as a, a kind of our benchmark. This is uh, what the Shepton Pro has done to the, um, the edge, and we'll use that as a reference. The reason I'm choosing the Naniwa Chosera next is because I have a suspicion that it will give a final result. And the reason for that is, for once, the the bread, the um, sorry, the bonding agent in uh, that Naniwa uses polishes a lot better, and um, my impression is that it gives a finer result than the um, Shapton. It might be because the uh, abrasive particles are finer in general, but we will find out, won't we? In just a couple of minutes, as you can see that. We aren't getting as much metal on the stone as we did with the other. And it, it does seem finer, but I guess that's subjective. Because um, <laughs> I kind of have an idea what the, 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 oh, the result will be, or else I wouldn't have been making this video. It doesn't grip the knife as much feels a little bit smoother so if I had a knife that was very dull at this moment I would have to spend quite a bit of time on this stone getting a good edge on it again but if I used the shaft and pro one I wouldn't have to spend as much time so if you're sharpening once a month or something like that. A couple of minutes here and there doesn't matter. But if you were sharpening a lot of knives every day, the numbers will be adding up quite fast. And uh, my experience is that choosing a coarse enough stone to start with is paramount to getting a good result fast. And it's often where when I talk to people that uh, aren't able to sharpen, keep trying and never get a sh getting a sharp knife. Uh, most of the times they aren't just they aren't going fast enough. Of course enough. I'm sorry. So there they are sharpening a completely dull knife on a fine stone. It's six six thousand grits or something like that, and and you're never going to be f finishing. So that's all the time I'm going to be spending on this uh, this Naiwa. I'm going to uh, yeah, let's dry off the knife, and I'm going to take this one up to the um, microscope again, and let's see if there's any difference. So we're done with the Naniwa Chosera, and as you can see, uh, we did get a finer result from the Naniwa Chosera than from the Shepton Pro. Uh, while both being graded by the Japanese standard, and both being stated as a thousand grit, you will get a slightly different result while using them. And so, while recommending stones, the Shapton Pro is a good stepping stone. Or if you want a little, little bit more jagged edge for doing, say, tomatoes or slicing bread or stuff like that. Uh, if you want a thousand grit, thousand grit stone as a finishing stone, I would probably more often than not, you know, recommend the Naniwa Chosera over the Shapton Pro. Um, and so, yeah, uh, the next stone I wanted to compare is the finished slate. It's sold as a thousand grit, but it isn't. 
And the reason why I say that is that natural stones don't have what you call um, abrasive particles in the way that a man-made stone has. Uh, they have natural mineral inclusions and they will differ from stone to stone and that's kind of um, it's kind of it's it's part of the charm uh, for me at least. Uh, you never know exactly what you're gonna get, but from from most reputable uh, quarries, you will have like Ardennes in Belgium. Uh, you will have a good idea of uh, what to get, but they don't have uh, grit ratings. Uh, they will uh, the manufacturer will give you a range. Uh, most of the time, as 800 to 1000, 800 to 1200, 8000 to 10,000, 15,000 to 20. Yeah, well, you, you get the idea. And the reason why they do that is they sharpen stuff on the knife, no, on the stone, and they compare it to, um, they compare the results to uh, what you would get from a man made stone in the same you know, range. So when this stone is sold as 1000 grit, you would expect it to give the same kind of result that you would get from another thousand grit stone, uh, if that well, if that makes sense. <laughs> so we will try to sharpen a little bit on this stone as well. Uh, get some more water on here, and this doesn't grip the knife nearly as much as the other stones did. The knife kind of you know skates over the surface a little bit more. But it is a very comfortable stone to work on though. And since it's black, it's it's kind of hard to see. Well, it is gray, but when the water is on, it's black. And it's kind of hard to see how much metal is removed. But since it doesn't grip the knife as much, you feel more comfortable working, you know, this, this way, edge leading uh, on it. I kind of like that. Not going to be spending too much time on it, just enough to remove the scratches from the previous stone so we can see if there is a difference. So, in the natural stones, I wouldn't expect you know a uniform uh, structure, I would expect some small scratches, some larger scratches, and uh, especially when you go as coarse as a thousand grit on these guys. Um, I have tried making some slates at home by you know roof tiles and stuff like that, uh, but they have such large mineral inclusions in them that you never get a good result. Uh, at least on the ones I found. And so, I think we are about good to go there. So I'm going to get this to the camera, and let's have a closer look. Yeah, so the last image should be up now, and as you can see, the um, finished slate actually gave us a finer finish than the uh, Nanimucho Sarah did, and uh, it's kind of what I was expecting, and also the reason why I, you know, used this stone last. But in using it, I, I, you know, I don't use this stone too much, but I might need to uh, take it out for a spin a little bit more often. So yeah. The um, goal of this video was to try to showcase that a thousand grit stone isn't necessarily um, similar to another thousand grit stone. Uh, they will have small, you know, uh, variances uh, between them. Some stones are good finishing stones, uh, like the Nanewacho uh, Sarah. Some, you know, stones are good stepping stones, you know, uh, for for you know, finer grits. Some stones are good for you know removing scratches, and a good example of that is if we take out this guy here. This is the Naniwa Hibiki, also a thousand grit stone. This one is quite hard, and it's very good for keeping flat surfaces flat. And uh, so this would be a good you know thousand grit step if you are polishing nice. But after using that, you could go for a, another thousand grit stone like the Naniwa Gokin Karuto, which is a little bit softer, 
and does a very good job of removing the scratches from this thousand weight stone and it's a very good stepping stone for polishing you know larger surfaces uh, up and beyond thousand grit so when I polish knives I use this uh, Hibiki thousand grit stone as a uh, you know as the last step for you know um, shaping the area that I'm polishing and I would use another also thousand grit stone for removing these scratches and um, so so there's no there's never you know a, a, an easy answer um, without having context so so what you will be using the stones for uh, is very important when you are choosing yourself a, a new stone um, yeah so uh, a lot of uh, comments and questions uh, since the last video I really enjoy answering um, all of them I try to do as best as I can uh, making the videos are fun but it's uh, it's almost as fun um, to hear from you guys I'm also on uh, buy me a coffee now uh, not hugely uh, on there yet but I'm, I'm giving it a go see if uh, it's, uh, it's something I want to do so if you're still watching um, thanks for uh, sticking by and I hope I'll see you guys in a, another video soon.